Hello, good morning. Can you hear me? And can yes. You yeah, you're right. Yes. yes. Okay, so we are just on time to start. Um, so uh, welcome to all of you for the this code to this coding boot camp. Uh, we can have uh, the plan for us is to have a few weeks uh, and have a lot of fun working with uh, Python and using it to explore some interesting uh, topics. Um, so let let me get started by uh, just showing you a quick tour of our website so that you can actually use some of the things there. So if you log into the website, and if you have any trouble with logging in, then just uh, uh, send us an email later and we can we can sort it through. But today, if you have any problems with logins, just follow along, okay? Uh, for this session, <clears throat> the chat is open. So if you have any questions for me, <clears throat> you can ask me through chat. Uh, I don't consider it an interruption, so please, uh, if you have any questions, please do ask, okay? Uh, now, when you go to the website, you're gonna find this session zero. I usually have a little placeholder with some uh, introductory information for you. So let's just click through that quickly and then we'll get to writing some code to it, okay? So uh, I think the most important point that I want to say, usually I say every time I start a session, is that if you put in some effort, you can be extremely productive uh, extremely successful, right? And by effort, I don't mean just in the first class or first hour, but you have to sustain it during the whole session, right? So it, make a, the best way to do that is not by using willpower, out of effort. The best way to do it is by um, creating some good patterns. Like you write a little bit of code every evening or every morning, whatever suits you, and then you stick to that pattern, okay? And if you stick to that pattern, then there'll be plenty of uh, opportunity for you to make progress. If you get stuck with anything, just reach out to me and I'll help you. And then at the end of this short period of time, you'll already see that you've made a lot of progress. Uh, one of the things you can do, I put some material here that you can browse through uh, and read. It's probably helpful to you. Um, uh, there's a little... Um, there's a little discussion forum here on the website. So do go ahead and introduce yourself. You may find some friends who are on the course or you might make new friends. Uh, it's good to know about uh, others and how they learn and uh, what their plans are and what their interests are. So please take a minute while I'm talking even, you can just click on add a post and just introduce yourself. Uh, you can tell us some things like <clears throat> where you're from, what you'd like to do after you finish with school. Um, Okay, I think that this extra question about jobs are not there. So most of you are not having the burden of working, but tell us about your interests and hobbies, okay? And also here, there's another little post that's helpful. We'll come more and more to this. I really uh, enjoy and consider it important to get input from you about uh, your learning goals and what things are important to you, um, because I use that uh, to kind of, um, decide what we discuss, okay? And unlike maybe some of the other courses you've taken, it's less about what I want to teach, much more about what you want to learn, right? So you have a lot of influence and control. Right? So for those who find the course too challenging, I can give you some extra help. For those who find it too easy, I can give you more challenging work, etc. Okay, so let's get into session one. If you go to section 1.1, which is our introduction, there's a couple of small things we can do uh, as soon as my website loads. Sometimes the website takes a little bit of time to load, uh, but once the page is loaded, then it, it loads everything, so it should go fast. Um, so what I want to do today is um, use this link. Let's take five minutes, okay? Let's use this link. I'll give you like three to five minutes. Use this link. If you click on this link, it will take you to a place where you can record uh, your learning objective is always good to take a few minutes at the beginning of any course to think about what, why am I here? What do I want to achieve, etc. And also share some of your background. Some of you have worked on a previous course with me. So try to put something fresh here. Okay. Or maybe something based on the previous course. Okay. So I'll give you five minutes. I'm trying to practice keeping quiet and giving you time to write things. So let's see. If you have questions, do ask me in chat.
Ah, somebody asked the question, how do you get to the survey? So first you go to the course webpage. So you go to the course webpage, it should look like this. Uh, like I said earlier, if any of you have trouble getting to the course webpage, send us an email, we'll figure it out. But once you're on the course webpage, there's session one here. And in session one, the introduction section, right? So if you go to session one, click on introduction, then right on top, you should see a link right here. So you can see I'm highlighting with the mouse. You should see a link here. Sorry if it's a little hidden, but oh, okay. Somebody's okay. You're having trouble getting to the web page. That's that's fine. Uh, I don't know if uh, if Manish can help you, but uh, for today, if it's a problem signing in, don't worry. Uh, everything will be on the screen. We'll also record the session, and then later you can um, you can do that work yourself. Okay, but we'll get it sorted out today. Uh, <clears throat> if you don't have access to the web page, it may be nice to keep a little notepad and take a couple of small notes. Okay. And this, for example, this, this survey, just put a note to yourself saying, take record my objectives after the session, etc. Okay? Just put a couple of notes on what needs to be done. Um, Okay, has anyone has anyone finished? You should tell me in chat when you're finished, okay? Okay, so we are hitting, we're getting close. There's one minute left. So I don't want to rush you. If you've started and you still have some time to do it, um, then uh, go to the, uh, uh, just put it on the side and then keep a note to yourself after the class you can finish. It, okay, I will wait another minute though. Don't rush. It's important you share your thoughts and ideas. Uh, somebody had a question about the, about making introductions. So. If you want to do that, you go to session zero and there you should have the discussions up, okay? Okay, I, I think we are at five minutes, okay? So, so just because I want to share a lot of information with you during the session when we are together, little bit of this you can finish offline. I asked you to do it because I want this session to be interactive and for you to actually have things to do, not just sit on a chair and listen. Okay, it is important to try out some things. Um, okay, so, um, so, so can somebody tell me how many percent complete you are? 50%? Anyone? Or anyone has not even started yet because you're clicking on links? Okay, somebody finished. Okay, wonderful. So we have at least one finish. Okay, I don't want to rush all of you. Those who have not finished, just keep it in a separate tab or something and just come back to the course website. Okay, you come to the course website back. So uh, there are three Python related things that I'm going to use for the first few sessions. And they're fairly simple, but I do want to get a quick idea. Okay, somebody said 60%. Okay, so those who are working on the on your goals and objectives, it's okay, keep it aside for a few minutes. After the course, we can come back and we can finish it. Okay, don't have to rush. What's the point in rushing? Okay, so come back to the web page with me. And then if you go to session one, sec, you know, again, from the course page, you go to session one, 1 1.0 exploring math with Python. And the introduction section, there's these three Python concepts, variables, doing logic with if, else, branches, and loops. Can you take a quick minute to click through and let me know where you stand? Like if you don't know it, or if you're a ninja, very good at it. 
please let me know. If I'm curious to know so I can adjust some of my discussion based on it. So again, I'll give you 30 seconds. This should be fast. You'll do it in like 10 seconds. Okay, so I'm going to say view results. Okay. So some of you have given me your input. So quite a few of you are new. Okay, so one of the things I want to encourage all of you, no problem if we don't know anything or if we don't understand anything. It's more a problem if we don't say it and we discuss it, right? If we discuss it, then you will get better at it. And actually, I like to always sometimes refresh and review things anyway as we go. Okay, so I will do that today. Okay, so now the next thing we want to do is, Today, so the idea of this course is we're going to always try to do something interesting. Uh, we're going to try to use Python to help us to make things easy for us. And uh, the question which we're going to come to or the topic we're going to come to today is uh, it is really important to have fresh eyes on things and also to ask interesting questions. Okay, so let's try this out. Um, so when we think about the world around us, one of the beautiful things about the world around us is that it is possible to describe it using mathematics. It's a surprise because when we created mathematics, we didn't know that we could get so much understanding of nature. We have so much understanding, but it still seems like a drop in the ocean. And there's a lot more we need to understand. Okay. But in mathematics there's a smaller subject, <clears throat> which we usually do in the early parts of our mathematical study, which is dealing with numbers and using numbers to understand the world around us, right? And what can we do with numbers? We can count things. We can understand how big things are, so magnitudes, right? And then we can work out, which is very tricky sometimes, how long does something take? Okay, so keep these three ideas in mind. And we're going to try to use Python to play around with this. So in order to use Python to play around with it, so I'm going to show you this thing for this course to make your life easy. I have embedded Python <clears throat> into the course website. Now, I'm not 100% sure, but there'll be a couple of moments like when you want to save your work here or later. This is connected to a site called Trinket, where all your work gets saved. So when you click on this, you may get the option to create a login. Then there's also a course page on Trinket. A little later, I will talk you through the login process. For now, you should be able to just click here. And the important thing is you can type some commands. I'll go through the commands in a minute. And then whenever you want to see what happens, you just hit the run button and you see something out there. So that's rather simple. It's really nice. It saves us a lot of time installing and so on. Also later you'll see, you'll be able to submit your code to me and I can ask you questions and you can ask me questions. So it's a nice interactive way for us to work. Now, quick question, is my font too small? Can everybody see what is on the screen? Oh, it's too small. Anyone? Ah, oh, font is small. Okay, so let me make it a little bigger. Okay, so this font, at least the font inside here should be big now. Uh, if anyone's still having problem, let me know. Okay, I'm sure it's better. So, okay. So the first thing we want to do, I guess, uh, today I'm going to spend the first part of our conversation uh, doing some text-based manipulations. Later we'll draw some nice pictures and so on and so on, if we get time, okay? So, okay, so the first thing we want to do is from within a program, if you want to send a message to someone, to a user, to yourself, we use this very simple command in Python, right? You have to tell it to print something. And the something here happens to be what we later will recognize is going to be called a string or a number. So if you want a string, this is the only technical thing you have to learn right now. If you want a string by which I mean a collection of characters, then you have to put quotes around them, okay? And you can put any message you want here. So you can say, hello everyone, and then run it, and then it's going to print it out to Right? So actually, in, one, in a couple of minutes, we have done the famous Hello World program. Usually in every programming language, the first thing you want to know is how to send a message from the program to the whole world. And for some of you who have uh, learned other languages like Java, we should consider that how complicated is the Hello World program. Okay, And you'll see here in Python, it's extremely simple. We have to learn one command. And commands always involve us using brackets and then you pass some, something to that command and it does something. The command here is called print and it basically prints, you, you get some information here, right? It says, it says that the print displays writes output, okay? Okay, now numbers. 
right? So actually Python is very powerful with numbers. In particular, it supports all mathematical operations. And later we're going to be able to bring even more powerful, even more powerful libraries in that can help us to do all kinds of stuff. So, if, so here are the mathematical operations, right? I've written them somewhere. Okay, I've written them here. So addition is obvious. Subtraction is obvious. Multiplication is different. Normally you use X, but in Python, it's a star, okay? Other languages, programming languages also use star. And the reason is X is a character. So sometimes it's confusing to use X, so they use star. And division is a slash, partly because most keyboards don't have the division symbol. Okay, now I quickly wrote down all these operations, even though some of you are, you know, in middle school or high school or even further on, it's really important to take a moment to think about what all these operations actually mean. Okay, I will see later if there's interest and time we will explore it. But for now, just okay, we have access to it. Okay, now next thing is a very important thing, the idea of exponents. Okay. And today I will just simply say that exponents, think of them as a shorthand. If I want to write multiplication by two with itself five times, instead of writing it five times like this, I just put five and put a double star. That's really a fun way and interesting way to learn about exponents, right? So instead of writing multiple multiplications, we just always collapse it and write it this way. Okay, why is this interesting? Well, for example, if you want to print a million, so let's do counting by millions quickly, okay? Because some people uh, may not have done it this way. So if you want to count by millions, the first thing we do is you print thousand, okay? And thousand is three zeros, right? So thousand, you'll write in powers now, you'll write star star three. Oops, sorry, uh, 10 star star three, okay? So this will print a thousand, let's take out, okay. Now let me say a few things quickly about Python. Uh, first of all, you see here, I put this hash symbol and I wrote something. This is called a comment. It's a note to yourself or to someone who's reading your code. It explains what is being done in that context. But the important thing about the comment is Python will just ignore anything you write there, which is kind of nice, right? So what, we, what I want to do right now is there's lots of prints on the screen and it's probably confusing to all of you. So I can just want to comment out this whole thing, right? And there's a nice way to do it. You highlight it all and you hit control slash. If you're on a Mac, you must probably do command slash. Okay, so you can do it. Or you can go line by line and put the command sign. Okay, the, the hash symbol. Okay, so now let's see. Now if I run this, I should just see one output, which is 1000. So 1000 is the power of three. Now counting uh, is done when we use the million system. Millions is just 1000 times 1000. So if you do 1000 times 1000 like this, there's a very nice thing. You can ask thousand has three zeros, another thousand has three zeros. So totally they should, when you multiply, you should get six zeros. So actually the powers add. I'm going a little fast here. You have to stop me if you want me to say anything again. I assume all of you know this stuff. So, so here's million now, so it's six. So it's a quick way for us to, to work with these numbers, right? So if I want to write a million, I just write a million. Now, what do I do when I want a billion? Then I go nine, right? And then I want a trillion. So it's all multiples of three that we use. And it's really, so now I have to ask, oops, 10 star star nine. So now I have to ask you this, it's very important for a moment. You see the number here, it's very quick for us. Once you train your brain to think in these units, that 10 power nine is a billion, okay? But here, if you see these much zeros, it takes you a lot of time to count them. And that's why in some places they will display this with commas and so on. But even with commas, you have to count how many sets of three are there. So I am slowly suggesting to all of you, especially when you work with Python, to think in these exponents terms, okay? So then you can easily go, these are called orders of magnitude, right? So you go 10, 100,000, million, billion, trillion, and so on. Okay, so we can work with large numbers very quickly. Okay, so much for numbers, right? So we got a beautiful little calculator already. So now we can go beyond it. And the question is, you know, what I'm trying to share with you is, it's not the calculator that's interesting. It's can we do, can we come up with an interesting question, right? And the question I'm asking is, how long does it take to walk across the United States? Now, if you are in another country or you are interested in another country, you can change this and figure it out for your, your country too. So let's take a moment and think about this. 
uh, probably like uh, 30 seconds. I usually go relatively fast. You have to stop me and slow me down, okay, if you need me to. So how do we answer a question like this? I asked a question. Usually what people do is after they ask the question, they say, I, I'm not going to spend much time on it. Or, or what they do is they go and they look it up on Google, right? So we can do that. But I'm going to show you that by asking the question and spending some time thinking about it, we have a fun experience and we actually understand something about the country and its sizes and so on. Okay. So how would we figure out how long it takes to walk across the country? Um, so I'm taking one path. The first thing is in order to figure out how long it takes to walk across the country, um, you have to come up with the size, right? Um, so we're going to try to figure out what, how, what is the size of the US. And now it's interesting, right? Size of US, uh, people say, oh, I should just look it up. Why don't I just look it up in some, you know, in some Google. So can somebody put in chat, uh, how would we figure out the size of the US, for example, if I wanted to do it? Anyone? You will check the miles from the West Coast to the East Coast. Okay, how will we check the miles? Shall we drive across and look at the look at the car speedometer, or how are we going to check? Well, if you want it efficiently, you can use Google. But if you want it like a different way, you can you can like literally do it. Yeah, literally do it. So now we it's too hard for us to literally do it. I would love to drive across the country, right? But now we're going to be like um, you know like explorers. We're going to try to find the answer using some other things we may know and not necessarily using Google. So I came up with this idea that you can take, how long does it take to fly, uh, fly across the US? So now I'm gonna introduce, thank you, that was, a great, that was a great suggestion though. And I love it if you please unmute your mic and make your comments like that, that's beautiful, well done. So time taken, right? So time taken to go, I won't write a longer one for now because I wanna save some time. Time taken is equal to, I don't know, right? So I have to figure out something. So I came up with the, with, the, with, the, with the idea that I actually know how long it will take me to fly, okay? So I, I have taken planes. So I can say time taken to fly, right? So this is very important. You must use some kind of information. You can use anything you know to try to figure this out, right? You can also just say, you know, does it take one day? So this is order of magnitude. And say, so does it take one day? No, not to fly, but you know, to uh, to get across. So let's say by flight, I don't. If I've not taken the flight, I can ask this question: Does it take a whole day to fly across the U.S.? Seems a little high. People are going back and forth, so maybe it takes half a day, right? So you can actually put something in here, and if you're going to put it, uh, I'm going to pick some number here. I'm going to say it's six hours, right? So I have to put a note to myself that this is in hours. Now I'm actually doing a Python <laughs> trick. Yes. I've actually done the West Coast to East Coast and it takes about four hours on an airplane. Okay, there you go, right? So I just, the whole idea here is in, in this kind of discussion, if you put six or five or four, it doesn't matter so much. You're gonna to get to an answer that's roughly correct. And then later to make it super more and more precise, you have to refine all of these numbers. So I'm also getting you into a slightly different mode than in your classroom. Where we're always trying to be super precise I'm trying to say sometimes, even if you're not super precise, if you do something approximately, you're going to get an answer that is interesting, right? And the answer we're looking for is, if I went to walk across the US, how long would I take, right? So we will try. So since you have said four, we'll put four, okay? Now the next thing is I want to get the distance. I want to get the size of the US. So now we have to ask the question. So what, uh, since you told me that it took you four hours to fly, now I have to ask the question, what was the speed? What do we think was the speed of that plane? You Any would end? divide the miles by the time. Yeah, but yeah. we don't know the miles, right? So what uh, do we think is the speed? Okay. okay, so first thing to start off, we must ask the question, how do we measure, uh, uh, how do we measure speed, right? It's miles per hour or something, right? So what do we think is the speed of a plane? How many miles per hour? How many miles per hour is the speed of a plane? Now we're going to guess, but we're going to make a reasonable guess. Do we 500? think- 500? Ah, that's a beautiful guess. 500 seems reasonable. Why? Can you give a reason why you pick 500 and not 5,000? 
Mainly because um, 5,000 would be, up, that's more than the speed of a rocket. And yeah. rocket to go really high, so exactly. the speed of an airplane would be less. Yeah, really. that's beautiful. That's the way. That's the way we do this, right? So you you can ease. So what I'm trying to say is, we know a lot of things. We have a lot of feeling for things. We have absorbed things over time, so we can work our way towards the answer quickly. Now, so 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 important thing I want to show you. I've already done something here, which is important. When we start thinking about calculations like this they're going to be a little long and we don't want to have to remember everything. Like if I wrote numbers like four and 500 and so on, later when I come and look at it, I don't remember what it is, right? What is for me? So it's important to give it a good name. So we're going to call these labels or names. Oh, I like to use labels and names. Sometimes people call it variables, but I, I don't want to use the word variable if I can help it because it's not so much the distinct changes that's important, right? I don't want to necessarily, yes, later I can change this to five or six, but that is less important to me than it has a meaning, right? Time taken to fly is four hours. Okay. Now the next thing is speed. So again, you can write, actually you can write speed. If you want, you can say speed of airplane. Okay. Now we'll come to some rules of how we can name these things. Okay. But for now, the important rule is it can be normal characters, use normal characters. And if you have multiple words, if I write speed of airplane like this, right? It's a little hard for our eyes to read it. So we have a few options. When you use multiple words and names, you can write speed of airplane. You can write a capital letter every time you go through uh, one, one word to the next. But in Python, people use the underscore. Okay, and they have a name for this. They call it, so uppercase, lowercase. Now this thing is called snake case, snake. Why? Because the word looks like a snake kind of, if you squint, okay? So anyway, small detour, but these labels are very important and you should always try to put labels into your code because later when I come back and say, okay, instead of 500, suppose we made, so for example, after this question is answered, we can ask the question, suppose we invented a faster airplane. How can we go from what, you know, like how long would we take, how, long, how fast does the plane have to be for me to get to the West Coast in one hour and so on, okay? So anyway, we got the speed, we got the time. Now, what would be the distance? Uh, you can say that the distance is speed into time. That's so you could do 500 into four. Yeah. So, but I'm going to use the uh, I'm going to use the variables to do it. Perfect. Please speak up like that. I love it. Okay. It's really nice. I then I can also see that you're following my comments, right? So it's very helpful. Um, okay. So and I love that you all are figuring this out quickly, right? So speed of airplane times time taken to fly. So now I have actually calculated something, but I can't see it, right? Because it's stored inside this label, right? Or even in some calling distance, let's call it size of US, right? I can do this. Now, what am I showing you while I'm writing this code? That choosing the names of these things, right now it seems like a simple, silly thing to do, but it's actually quite important as we write bigger and bigger programs. If we choose nice descriptive names, the code will be easy for us to understand about. Okay. Okay. So, so, so here's what you do size of us. And then you go and you say, okay, I want to see what it is. So now you say print and then you put size of us. Okay. If you do this, it will just print it out. for you. Okay. So what is this now? 2000 is what, what units is this? It's 2000 what? Miles. 2000 miles. Beautiful. So we know. So now already you learned another important thing. Units are very important when you're talking about the world, right? We must know whether it's miles or kilometers. It makes a difference, right? So, okay. So we can work with this number. Does anyone, did anyone look on Google? What is the correct answer? What does Google tell us the size of US is? Who's going to look and tell me? We can also check it, right? So tell me, someone tell me on, tell us on chat. I got it. Yeah, what is it? It's 3.797 miles per uh, square, square miles. Three, what, three, th what? 3.797 million the, miles. That's the area, no? All right, that, that's the area. So yeah, yeah. See, well, how did I find out it's the area? Because you use the unit square miles, right? 
Uh, okay, so now this is going to be interesting. So let's just, okay. This is a good place where Google trips this up, right? Because you can't ask this question. What does it mean size of US? Google says, yeah, I'll give you the area. But we actually want to know the length from East. Uh, I just searched. It's, it's saying it's slightly over 2,800 miles. Yeah. yeah. 2,790 yeah. miles. There you go. See? So that means we were close, right? If this was five, for example, we would have got 2,500. I was going to use six. But I never got 6,000. Right? So, okay. So something like this, right? Maybe the speed of the airplane was a little faster, slower. So, but the point was without looking at Google, I figured something out. Now, in, while figuring it out, I understood something very important. Is the US like a rectangle or does it have some different shape? How many it's a weird shape. Yeah, it's a weird shape. So if I go at the bottom of the US, I can go from where the Panama Canal is, which is one of the shorter points. Down, if I go down south a lot, it becomes very narrow, right? So... I, that's really the shape of the continent. But okay, if you come down south, the US is definitely more narrow than on top, right? So actually, it's not an easy question to answer. What do we mean going from across the country? So now I have to pick some place in the middle of the country. So you see, the question also is not very precise. So our approach to finding the answer also should be approximate, right? Because if I get super precise, I'll get stuck in all kinds of details. But this is enough for us. It's 2,500 miles. So let's get started here, okay? And then I'll allow all of you to think about these questions. Like if you had to go across the country, would you choose the top? Would you choose the bottom? Why would you do this? There's mountains there, there's rivers in between, right? I'm gonna hide all that information right now. But you see, as soon as we ask this question, we learn a lot of things, we can go and look in the map, etc., etc. right? Okay, so now let's go and see this. So we know it's 2005, how long will it take us to walk? So first thing we can do is guess. Does anyone want to guess how long would it take us to walk 2,500 miles? 15 days. <laughs> 15 days. Okay, good guess. How did you come up with that guess? Because uh, our speed can't be very fast if we are walking. Uh -huh. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So let's make it a little more precise and see what we come up with. Maybe, so maybe it could be like about 20 days because... Um, as she as she said, the speed cannot be that fast, but it can it cannot be that slow either. Yes, yes, beautiful, beautiful. I love all your comments. Okay, so keep uh, even even if you have answers, guesses, questions. This is beautiful. Okay, so let's see how we figure this out. Rather than just saying fifteen or twenty, let's try to break it down a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to start walking, and the first question I can ask is. How, how many how many steps can I how quickly can I take a step right so we can say let's say for to make our life easy we take one step every second okay? yeah that's not bad right because yeah if you're not if you're not too slow you can easily do one step every second so but the important thing then is how is the step size how big is my step right so I'm going to put something here and I'm going to create a headache for myself we'll go look this up later okay my step is probably easy to measure in feet, right? So how big is one my step? Huh? One feet to two feet. Yeah, so let's pay, um, somebody's gonna measure it out, okay? So we're gonna change this number. Let's pick two because somebody said two, but maybe somebody else says my steps are bigger. So it's gonna be three or four, or you can even go and measure it. It's a curious question, right? That how, how big is my steps? And I want all of you to become like explorers and experimenters. Sometimes you must take a step and you must measure it. Okay, it's a beautiful thing to do. And as you get bigger and taller, you can see how your step size increases. Everybody measures your height. Very few people measure step size. And if you measure your step size, you'll find something interesting. You should then immediately go and compare your step size to like step size changes when you're walking and when you're running, for example. Right, in running, it's a very important thing, the step size. It's called the stride length. And you can go and see what is the stride length of someone like Usain Bolt. And you'll be amazed at how big one step of his is, right? One stride, of course, he's running, right? So, okay, lots of, so see what I'm saying is that as we play with these things, a lot of questions will come. And we should write them down and you don't have to answer all of them in one shot. You can do little by little, okay? Okay, so step size is two. And sometimes to remind yourself, you can say in feet like this. And you see my, my code then becomes a little log of my thoughts. Okay, so I can, so basically I'm, it is in feet and I'm also saying one step per second, right? So now I want to figure out how much I can walk in a day. 
right? So if I take two, if I take one step in a second, how many steps will I take in an hour? What, what do, how do we figure that out? 3,600. Uh huh. Why is that? That's correct. Why is uh, that? Because, uh, because in one hour there are 60 minutes and in yeah. each minute there are 60 seconds. So yeah. it's like 60 to 60, 3,600. Beautiful. And you take one, sec uh, one step per second. Beautiful. So that is the correct answer. I could write 3,600 or I could write 60 times 60. You see, that's the beautiful thing about Python, right? Sometimes if the numbers are not clear to us, we can just multiply it, right? And you can put a comment to yourself. These are notes to ourselves. So, okay, so we got how many steps in an hour. So, so distance in an hour, we can easily go now because step, steps and distance are connected, right? Distance traveled when I'm walking, right? You should write more expressive names here for yourself. Okay, distance travel in hour, let me say. So that is going to be 3,600. Well, we can say, actually we should say distance travel to make this very uh, flexible. We should say distance travel is number of steps times the size of the step, right? So I'll put it like that. So that then when I change my step size, all these quantities will change. Okay, so, so I, I'm getting there. So I can just print this out. So what is print of distance travel say? So if I print this, does somebody know the answer already? Well, it's just multiplication. 72,000. 72, oh, okay, let's see what is it coming up. Sorry, 7,200. Okay, 7,200. So one zero was up. That's good. This always we should keep in our mind. We should figure it correctly and then double check our, check our work. And of course, you can see the pleasure of working with Python. I, it just takes care of it. I don't have to struggle so much. I know it's going to be somewhere near 77,000. And I just look at the screen and it says 7,200. And I said, that looks right. Constantly, we're checking our work as we go in. Okay, so how I want to figure out distance traveled in a day. So how much distance will I travel in a day then? You can multiply it by 24. Multiply by what hours. though? 24. Ah, so okay, that was my- 24 hours. That's my first guess, right? You can multiply by 24. But of course, we're going to come back and change this because we cannot walk all day. You're going to be exhausted the next day, right? So probably it's better to make it like eight hours. But let's leave it like this for now. And let's just see what happens when we print this out. Okay. Now you see that I got in my screen, I got lots of numbers here. Wow, that became a little big, but we'll see what does that mean. Um, but let's just go back here and see, we have all these numbers and we don't know what each of these numbers mean. We have to go back to the screen and see it. So let us put a small message to ourselves here. Let's do it like this for today. You do uh, here and you say size, the size of US. Let's see what happens if I do this. And even I can put something like this. Excuse me? Yes. Can you make the size bigger? Which like, size? the the size of the font yeah i tried is it still too small is this better yeah that's better that's better okay okay yes please ask all those things okay i won't know if you sit there and say i wish i could see it but i can't it's too small for me okay so let's try okay what was the end of step seven? Oh, it's hidden okay so let's try to get all this worked out okay so can you all see this now? Okay, let's see how the prints come out now. Okay, so you can, let's go through this again quickly. Somebody asked me what was, because it was getting cut off, right? Steps in an hour times step size. Okay, don't try to memorize any of this, okay? Notice this, I'm teaching a very important skill here. This is not supposed to be memorized, even though we want to memorize all this. We should just go slowly, a little bit. I am nervous because I don't want to make mistakes and I'm like, okay, I wish I had memorized it. But I'm trying, I never memorize it. Right, I'm just trying to work with all of you, taking your input and your comments. In the ninth step, in the huh? ninth step, uh, in the ninth step, yes. shouldn't we write distance traveled in a day? Here, right? On yeah, yeah, that's, that's correct. Yeah. Exactly, beautiful. See, that's also. I was getting a bit confused. Yes, correct, and this is also wrong, right? And then I should print out here distance traveled in a day. Beautiful. So, so of course, that is the most important thing as a person writing programs sometimes because we're managing so many things right now see i'm thinking about all of you and all these variables and all these things it's easy to make mistakes so we have to quickly catch them we have to check our work and if somebody shows us it we should immediately think about it and make the adjustments 
quick. And it's why it's sometimes nice to work with friends or family because they are sim sitting outside our heads and they quickly when they look at the screen, they see something which I don't see. Right. So beautiful. Well done. Thank you. So now let's put some comments in here because all numbers are coming out on the other side. So this is distance traveled in an hour. Distance walk traveled by walking, right? In an hour. So now notice it's a little painful to do all this, you know, words and everything. But then my program becomes nice. Later when I make this one line like this, it starts to show. Uh, it starts to show. It becomes more meaningful to me. Okay, so that's not. You don't have to do it, but it's nice to develop a style for yourself. Okay, so for now, the last number is this. Now, but this number became big. Is it this big? What is this? Is does it? This right? is a uh, very small because it isn't feet. Ah, somebody figured out. Okay, so who's going to tell me now? This is something we cannot memorize, right? Who's going to tell me how to convert feet to my miles? Because if we convert this to miles. Then it'll it'll be easy for us to get to our answer. The last Please, piece? can you tell how many uh, kilo how many kilometers are there in one mile? One kilometers is one point six, one point six okay. kilometers in a mile. Sure, I'm not used to using miles. Ah, so today take it for those who are using kilometers, take it as a little bit of an extra strain. Okay, just work with miles for today. We'll come back and we'll discuss miles and kilometers another time. Okay. But you can always, once we get the answer in miles, you can always multiply everything which is in miles by 1.6 and you get everything in kilometers. Okay, so no problem for us. Other than another thing we can get used to is units are not that bad, right? They have a name and then we understand what they mean and then we can work with them. And then going from one unit to another means we need some way of converting. Okay, so how do we convert? Excuse people? me? Yeah. Uh, when we write size of US, then yeah. why does it show the brackets? Huh, when you write print and then correct because when you pass this in like this it actually thinks that there are two elements in a set okay and it thinks there are two elements and so it puts brackets and shows it like two elements of a set later you'll realize this set is like a tuple okay so it's actually if you put commas every time you put a comma it's going to put a bracket around if you, if you don't have if you don't have more than one object in here it won't put the bracket Okay, and later I'll show you, for example, okay, why not I show right now? We can, if you don't like these brackets, it's a little annoying, you can just do plus. And what Python does when you try to plus things is if there are two strings, it will just join them together. But obviously- Concatenation. This, concatenation, that's the nice word for it. But of course, for us, we can even say join, right? But actually concatenation is a better word. And the idea is that it takes the first word and sticks the second one at the end of it. But to do that, I have to make sure that the second thing is also a string, which it is not. It is a number. So you just make it into a string by putting str like this. So let's see what happens if I did this. If you do this and run it, see now it becomes one, no brackets, nothing. And that's because there's only one thing passed to the print guy. It gets one guy and he says, oh, it's a string. I will just print. I don't need the brackets. But if you pass multiple things like this without joining them, without concatenating them, it will put the brackets and the comments. Okay. Uh, so if you put the if you put the quotation marks, then it will just show that size of US. But like if you put string, then it will show the value. Is it something like that with the string? Ah, so that is yet another problem. Like if I do this, well, it's going to be interesting, right? If I do this now, what does it say? It says this is not a label anymore. If I put the quote around this guy, then it becomes just a string. So if I do this, then it will just print size of US like that, right? Which is not what we want. We want to see the number it contains. So then we must take off the quotes. When we take off the quotes, you see, first of all, the color changes in the, in the screen, but more importantly, this thing is now actually a label. And when Python comes along, it says, hey, you put size of US here. I think you mean the label. And I think you want me to show you what this label is pointing to. It's like a sticky note. What is the number on the size of US right now, right? So yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Um, are you gonna give all of this in the assignment? Because um, I'm, I'm, it's hard writing all of this. Don't write it. Don't write it. Okay. First of all, two things. I'm going to save this. Hopefully, we can see it. Okay. Number two, I want you less to focus on writing all this, 
we want to focus more on what ideas we used, right? And okay. you can invent your own ideas, right? Instead of flying, maybe you know something about. Something. So one of my students said, you know, I took a car trip, but I didn't go all the way across the country. I went only half the way, or I went only, you know, somebody said I took a bus trip and I went to Washington D.C. And I know how long that took. So then I'll imagine how many Washington D.C. size trips are there across the U.S. and so on, right? So you can use your own, the, it's less important today for us to know exactly the steps, but I will save this down. Okay. And of course, if you try to do, I'll show you how you can do the work and submit it to me. And at that time, if you get stuck or you want me to resend you this or something, we can also share it again. Okay. So don't be too fast. I'm going to quickly type down everything. Okay. Now, one more thing that uh, we have arranged for you is this whole talk, we will record like a, like a video and upload it. So you can always go back to the video and put it on the screen. You'll see all this again, right? So when you're working, if you get stuck, you can look at it. Uh, oh. uh, so one more thing. Yes. Like if you put uh, quotation marks on the size of US, yes. do you have to put the string sign, STR? Ah, because, yeah, just... yeah. So the point, okay, that's a good question. In fact, it's a very important question, right? So if I do this, if I take this off, and if I tell him, please make it a string like this, like this, if I do, he simply says, oh, you don't mean the label. You mean the literal string size of US. So it's just going to print size of US. Right? See here on my right side, you can see size of US, which is not very fun. Right? Does it make sense what happened there? Yeah. So yeah, if you I put the string, it treats it as a label. As a if label. you don't. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay, if I put if the quotes, yeah. So there's a technical. So Yes. If I put uh, put the string sign and if I put uh, size of US in brackets, you uh, you just showed it earlier. It was still showing size of US. Uh, no, no, no. So let's fix it now, right? So now let's. Do, so I'm I'm just highlighting. Very good question. I've never discussed this before in a class. So thank you for the question. I'm sure all of you have these kind of doubts, and these are the dusty corners that we should clear up, right? So if I put like this, it is literally the string. It's called a string literal. It literally means size of US. I don't care what points to what the label is, nothing. I'm just going to print it out for you. If I take it out, now it means the label. If I take, oops. If I take out this quote, it means the label, right? This, this means the Python knows it means the label, but it's not going to work. Why? Because Python says, whoops, I cannot concatenate. See the word concatenate is there for us. I cannot concatenate a string and an integer. Why are you telling me to connect a string to an integer? I cannot do this. I won't do this. Maybe you're making a mistake, right? So now we put this str here. This is a different kind of thing. This is saying, please take the integer and convert it into a string. But now the string will contain not size of US, but it will contain the integer. How clever, right? So it actually Python goes, it says, oh, size of US is the label. Let's go find what the value contained in that label. It's some number. Let me convert that number into a string and then let's join it together. Amazing, no? With a couple of line of code or half a line of code, it got done. Okay. Right? Huh? And if I put if I put quotation marks inside this, like yeah. will it ignore the string or it will like still think of the string? Oh, as soon as you put quotation marks, it says, "Oh, you want me to just print size of yours? I'll print it for you." Okay, but then <laughs> it won't. Okay, so it yeah, ignore because the string I, I think the question is like Suhani so because it's already a string. Putting string again doesn't matter because it's saying that okay, okay. it's already a string okay. i am converting string again to string so no effect yeah it okay, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. But very good question excellent question and i think it's a very important concept here yeah very important concept Thanks. so yes yes thank thank you manish thank you for jumping in um but i have a quick question would it can you um concatenate a uh, integer Yes. Okay. So since we're having all these concatenation questions, let's take a second and just let me clear up this so that our minds can be clear. Sometimes I like to do this. So I'm just going to hide all this and let's just look at it quickly. Okay. So if I say print first an integer, let's say five. Okay. Then it will just print the integer. Why does it do it? Because it actually says I'm very clever. I can do this. If I do print five plus five, it will do something strange. It will add five plus five to 10 and then say, okay, I got 10 but it's actually converting five plus five into a string to print this. Okay. But now if I take one of these and I make it something, right? If I say, I don't know, age plus five like this, then it will immediately break. It'll say, I don't know how to join a string and an integer. 
So now this is the starting of our problem. And this problem gets a little worse if I say create a label called age and say the label age is five. And here I say age. Now you see that becomes interesting, right? Because it's an integer if it's if you think of it as a label, right? But uh, now what will it do? Will it just join them together? No. No, because it says that's an integer. I will not join it for you. So now somehow I tell Python, can you please take the number five, which is stored inside age and make it into a string, right? So then I put the stir and it actually converts it into a string. And now I get what I want, right? It actually, okay, there's no space here, but okay, I can put a space here. So remember, it's very fastidious. If you don't give it space, it doesn't know how to make it. Okay, what? yeah, now I got it. Do we get it? Yeah, yeah, it's a tricky one. This is very tricky, by the way. And I really appreciate all of you for asking those questions and making the comments, right? One because, question. Yes, please. So if you have, like, if you have, um, you, you do an integer in a string and it won't work, right? So yes. then you can do uh, the age in a bracket and like not typing, not making age an integer, but right, like here you've written string age. But instead of yes. writing stage, you can write string five. Will that work? Yes, it will work. That also will work because then it knows to take five and convert it into a string. Okay. Okay. So the the using so string five is the simplest thing. It just literally it actually takes five and does the work. This is more sophisticated, right? Because now Python has to say, oh, you put age here, and see Python is not at all confused. He knows the difference between this age and this age. Right? Even they look similar, it knows as quotes on the other guy. That's just a literal string. It just has the value A G E. But this is actually a label. So let me go and find out what values in the label. And then it comes back as five here. It replaces A G E here with five. Then it takes the five and makes it into a string. Right? So the yeah. string five. So just to show you, the string five literally after this process is done, the string five looks like this now. Right? It looks like that. And now it says, oh, it's two strings. I can concatenate them for you. And then it just does this, right? So that's a lot of little magic going on when we write this simple little thing, right? And I want, we'll come back to this one more time because this is a very powerful idea in programming. How things are looked up and converted into each other and actually producing the correct answers for us, right? So um, later we're going to see this, yes. Um, so what, I have another question that's different from that. Yes. What's the difference between a single quote and a double quote? Ah, so let me put this back to age. So we understand this part. So in Python, actually, you can single quote and double quote do the same thing. So why are that always whenever you see two ways to do something, you should ask why. Okay. Sometimes it's a boring reason. It's like a historical reason. Now, here's what I would say. So what? So let's ask this thing. Uh, can you give me your name? Arnav. Arnav. So if I want to say Arnav's age, right, like in English, I have to write like this, right? Does that look right? Yep. But now Python gets confused, right? It says, hey, you broke the string here. And then it's going to break. It's going to get confused and say, what? You broke the string there. And now there's this half, half big string sitting here, right? You see what I mean? So yeah. when I this, it says, oh, so the Python people said, hey, we can be clever. How about we use double quote in that case? I'll put double quote like this. Uh, okay. Right. And now I can say I'm now saying, so I can keep the English grammar still kind of, you know, possessive case and all that stuff. And if I'm clever with brackets later, I'll show you how we can deal with this in more complicated situations. But it's a kind of cool trick, right? By introducing a second symbol for strings. But so therefore they are synonyms. Python treats it the same way in situations where it can be same. So if I, if I, if I don't have the apostrophe there, I can put like this and it will also work, right? If I do this, it will also work. But the moment I, 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 I have the apostrophe in there, then I, I am in trouble. Okay. Okay. Good questions. Yep. I love them. They're beautiful. Please keep it up. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now we took a long detour. See how beautiful when we started exploring things, we find out all kinds of beautiful things about Python and how things work. So that is really cool. We must take, some, sometimes you have to write a note and say, let's come back later. Okay, but here it's good probably just to solve it right now. Okay, so we're almost near our answer. We're going to distance travel in a day and then we want to convert this from feet into mile, right? 
Now somebody had put in in a, a, a suggestion. Anyone want to, one more person want to tell me how how do I do this? How do I convert feet into miles? How many feet are there in a mile? Okay, so if you don't know the answer, we can guess. Suppose you're walking. Somebody, anyone has walked a mile? Yeah, all the all the Indian people are going to say I've walked kilometers. There are five thousand two hundred eighty feet in one mile. Yes. Okay. So does that look reasonable? So. For the Indians, I would say today, instead of using 1.6 for conversion, use two for conversion. Okay, so two kilometers. How many steps would that be if I have to walk two kilometers? It feels like it can't be hundred steps. That's too small. It can be thousand steps. Maybe not ten thousand, right? So we can just. I'm showing how to get a good guess. If I ask you, don't look Google. Let's guess it. Maybe we can say it's some number between one thousand and ten thousand. And sometimes you can just take the middle value. So for today, I'm just going to take the middle value. I'm going to divide by five thousand, even though someone gave the exact number, five thousand two eighty. But look how beautiful! I got five thousand without any looking up, just trying to use some common sense and figuring out it, right? And that is a skill. It's a very, very powerful skill. That right? is more powerful than solving equations and all kinds of memorized things. It's just to use our mind, calm down. Look at the question and say, "How will I get it? I don't know how to convert feet to miles, but what can it be? I'm looking for a number. How big can that number be? And then figure it out." Okay, so I divided it. So now let's see. Okay, so let I have to put some comment here. So let's put this in here. So what? This is the most interesting part. How far we got in a day? So distance. What did we do? We walked, right? Distance walked in a day. Okay. So if you say distance walked, let's say in a day here, okay. And we did literally a day, right? I did 24 hours. So let's just work with that. But it, so distance walked in a day is about what is this now? 34.56. What is it? Feet. What is this? Miles. Miles. We struggled to convert it to miles, so it's miles, okay? So actually, even you can put a note to yourself: distance walked in a day, and you can put a bracket here and say in miles. Nice. So now we won't forget that part, right? By the way, I have to tell you this: when I was younger and I was studying all this in class, they would tell me to do all these conversions, miles, feet, and all these things, and I used to get bored. But now you see why it's not boring. I need all this. Otherwise, how will I record all these things without getting confused, right? And then there's a separate discussion: miles and kilometers. Okay, but we need some units, and we need to know when I'm using feet. Why did I use feet for walking? Because if I try to measure my step size. In miles, one step is like whatever one over five thousand. It's a small fraction, right? So it makes my head hurt when I use the wrong units. Sometimes natural units make sense, right? Which is sensible for the problem. But then if I use the units that are sensible for the problem, then I have to convert, right? Okay. Anyway, we got that. So now we know the size of the units. So time taken. Now we're almost there. So I can print time taken. What? 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 How do I compute this? Well, how do I compute the answer? What's the answer? How do I calculate? What do I need to do? Since you all helped me so far, how do I get the last part? What's the calculation? I can. Uh, you have to divide the distance by the speed. So you have to just take and like you have to estimate the speed. No, we did them. No, we know size of US, right? You would just do. Um, oh, okay. You would okay. just do the speed you are doing and the. Uh, what was it? The size of the U.S. Yes. and you will multiply them. Yeah, well, not multiply, divide. We have to do carefully. So let's think about it. I know the size of the U.S. If you look here, it's two thousand five hundred miles. I can walk thirty miles, thirty-five miles a day. So I have to basically divide this, right? So if I divide this, it will tell me how many days. So instead of putting thirty-five in there, what is that? That's the distance traveled in a day. So I just put it as a division, right? Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. For example, let's do a simple problem in our head so we understand this. I'm not. We are not memorizing anything today. Suppose the size of the U.S. was two thousand miles, and I could go thousand miles in a day. How long would it take me to get there? Two days. Two days. How, two did, days. Get two? How did we get two? Because we. Um, you took the size. Yeah. And then we divided. Divided. So now instead of two here, there's some other number. It's thirty-four, thirty-four miles, and the size is two thousand five hundred. 
Okay, so let's see if I print this what I get. Whoa, something happened. What happened? Ah, distance traveled in a day is not converted, right? Yeah, so I have to divide this by 5,000. So let, can I just do this now here? I can divide by 5,000 here. So this is going to be in miles, okay? So let's see now. Okay, so we got our final answer. Phew, 72 days. How does that look? How many, how, how, how big is that? How many months is that? Around almost three months. Two and a half months. Two and a half months, right? Two and a half months. Yeah, so not bad. I thought it would take like years, right? Did anybody think it would take years to walk across the country? No. No, you thought it two months? Yeah, two to three months. Okay, two to three months. That's good if you have the feeling for it, right? So now remember, we walk 24 hours a day, but probably that's not quite possible. So we could make it eight hours a day or 10 hours a day. So you can change this now. Right now it becomes a little bit bigger. Okay. And later for those who are using cars and thinking, you can ask if I drive across the country, what happens? Is it easy to change this calculation? If you're driving, what has to change? The speed. Ah, the speed. So the distance travel per hour, right? How much distance travel in an hour here, you'll replace by the car speed, but that's easy to do. So this is something for you to play with. Okay. You can say I travel, I don't know how fast you're going to drive, 60 miles per hour or break the speed limit and go 100 miles per hour, which is not good. But you can try all these things, right? And just play with these calculations. Now, something for us to try once we do this, you can go and you can look at this fun link I posted here. It gives a list of all the people who walked across the US. So go and look at it when you have time and you can see how long it has actually taken them. Okay, so for now I saved this here. When you come back, you should probably see all this here. Okay, and I I think I wrote some solution like this before. So all this should be on your screens. Okay, if you want, somebody had asked, okay, I don't want to type all this. I want to just be able to review it later. You should have everything here. Okay, I'm just, gonna, yes. I, I checked on Google Maps and if you walk, it'll take about 38 days. I know, but we have to now see those are real walkers, right? They're serious walkers. We have to see how many yeah. hours they walk, right? And they probably have bigger strides than us. So notice in this kind of problem, the step size is a very big impact because there's lots of steps involved, right? So if I, if I take the step size to five even, you see this number will come down quite a bit. Let's see how, how much. You see what? Yeah. yeah. So if I don't calculate correctly, <laughs> some things can make huge impact. Because there are thousands and thousands of steps. And if I'm off in that calculation and so on, right? So what was the number you said that somebody walked across? How long did they walk? 30, 30, 40 days, right? Yeah. Yeah. So probably what they did is they have slightly bigger step sizes and they probably walked more hours than eight because they have a goal to get to the other side, right? They don't want to sleep for like, after walking for eight hours, what are you going to do? Right, so you can walk for 10 hours, right? So you can make these adjustments. So you can actually work backwards and say, how did they do that? What did they have to do? And sometimes you find some interesting things. Maybe the guy had, he was not walking very slowly. So it's taking more steps or, you know, he was taking two steps in a second, right? All these things will change. So you multiply this by two. So you can just try to see, okay, I know the answer. Now let's see, how did he do it, right? And you can figure it out. Okay, see, there's your 30, you see? Probably two steps a second is possible, right? Can you walk at two steps a second? Yep. Yeah, one 1,000, right? You take one step for one and another step for 1,000. Two 1,000, uh, four steps. Okay, so play with this, have fun. Quick question, tell me in chat or in your words. Was this fun? Yep. Yes, yes. Yeah. And what that's what I want to share with all of you, right? Even simple questions can have us to find lots of beautiful ideas. Okay, we are a little tight on time, okay? So part of the thing I want to do is, I don't want us to rush through things. So, but I want to show you something fun. So how many of you know what a chapati is? Um, who doesn't know what a chapati is? Anyone? On chat? Okay, how many have actually made a chapati? Has anyone actually made a chapati? Me. I have. I, have. I tried. I tried. <laughs> I tried it. Beautiful, beautiful. So, okay, so here's a question, okay? If you made a stack of all the chapatis eaten in India for one day, right? Just one day. That means you must imagine somebody's cooking them and putting them in a pile. Like usually when you make chapatis, you put them in a hot box or you put them in a pile so people can come and take them and eat them. 
how tall would this stack be what do you think let's try to uh, uh, the first one the height of a very tall building okay so you can click this let's take a poll and see what we come up with has everybody that has everybody done it no so let me say we no no let's see what everyone put your entry here or no i want to see what the results are let's see okay only six of you have done okay i can refresh it a lot of you think it will be the tall of height of a tall building okay some of you think it will be as tall as mount everest by the way that's interesting right mount everest we just talked about it it's about 8 kilometers so it's even less in miles okay so it's not when you take mountains and look upwards they they are not distances are not as big right like the us is 2000 miles okay we'll talk about heights in a, later okay and in fact there's a beautiful question if you if you ask me next time i'll tell you the answer why is everest not 10 times larger than this it's also an interesting question right could it be possible we have taller mountains and the answer is probably not but the answer is very interesting why is the case okay let me refresh this one more time see what guesses came oops did i get okay i have to go to this page stacking to okay okay let's see what we got oh uh, view results okay now i got more okay everyone's pretty confident it's somewhere here right somebody says it goes to the moon okay how many of you could have said this couple of you right can somebody explain why you think it will go to the moon that's a lot of distance right it's like thousands of times the height of mount everest you think it's going to be that tall i can probably try how to calculate it yes that's what we want to calculate okay so that is our goal so we want like a per, they like 1.2 billion people in india and they say yeah. like they they eat two chapatis every day and then yeah. if one chapati is like 0.5 cm that would be a lot you know maybe like yeah, yeah, you're, on the, you're on the right track okay yeah and then what happens yeah so uh uh this say like, we'll just wait we'll see okay, so the we'll just see the distance and then maybe divided by um yes. divided by yeah. uh 100000 to Beautiful. see it, it in uh, kilometers yeah so we can do this right so question to all of you should we do it now or you guys are going to do it and we can discuss next time i think i'm going to do it okay all of you can do this right so now let me show you how so since we used up our time let me show you how can we you do this work and how can you share it with me and so on so let's go to this section exploring on your own um so let me just okay i'll be scrolling right so there's a link here can you see it can all of you see this link if you click on this link it will take you to the trinket site okay and if you go to trinket site you so you see here they, for me it comes like this because i'm already signed in there but if you go to the trinket site you have to create a login just use your google any any email address and put any password and create an account if you don't have an account for those who took a course with me before you should already have the account you can sign in now after you sign in you will be signed in you'll see your name on the top like this whatever your name is and then if you click on home if you click on home you will see all the courses that you joined for here i've i've joined lot of courses okay and our course is called coding boot camp right so you should find python boot camp for kids and then here if you click on this 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 is where you want to end up right this is our course and here you see all these questions are here so i've asked some interesting questions i think you can answer all of them you can even create your own questions okay and how what do you do once you, let's look at the stacking chapatis i have asked this question here if you say show trinket it will show you a little place where you can write your code okay and then once you write your code below here your your screen will look a little different here i can see everything you have done you can you will have a place a button here to submit and a box for you to write any questions or comments okay and if i go for example i have a dashboard here i can see who you know no people who has started who has not started etc okay so nobody has started yet so i don't see it but uh, if you will all log in and create this if you have any problems let me know we can discuss next time and uh, can you post a link for this web page on the chat oh yeah okay let me try to get this okay yeah 
Here you go. Oops, it went to the wrong place. Did, they, every, did anyone see a chat for me? No. Okay. Now. Right now. Yep. Okay, so will you all uh, just follow the steps, couple of steps, okay? So now there's a lot of interesting things for you to do on this site. I'm going to create a lot of questions, a lot of uh, interesting things. And just to give you a flavor, later we can start creating some interesting advanced projects. For those who are more advanced, I will take these projects and I will split them into easy, intermediate and advanced. Okay, I'll do that today or tomorrow and put some more here. And you can also suggest questions if you have things that you're thinking about and make a practice to write a little code every day. You can talk to your parents or, or whatever and figure out which, which time of the day you want to do it when your mind is fresh and let's go and explore all these things. Okay, and then before I let you go, I want to say next time we will go and we will continue from here. We'll solve this stacking chapatis problem and then we will start uh, some new stuff okay so i want to i want to get to i start i tried this one yeah not in program but i figured out that it would be much more than the height of everest ah so already our guest was not that close right okay so good good point well done well done not too hard this problem is right but here i want to leave you all with this very important thing you must learn how to ask good questions right questions that make us curious and interested like i made up some question about chapatis right but hopefully it's interesting it's, i didn't think about it that way before now i am like curious but it gives me a lot of interesting things i understand the population of india i understand how much wheat is used to make chapatis right can you imagine a stack that is taller than everest that is hard for me to imagine so much wheat is consumed then you can imagine how much land has to be cultivated to make that much of wheat Assume that they're all eating wheat chapatis, right? And so we understand a lot of things. We just have to keep up, keep pulling the thread, take some time and solve it. And we can find lots of things that we didn't understand about the world. And by doing this over years and time, you become a very uh, strong thinker, right? You can work out all kinds of things. People come to you and they say, ask some strange question. And you're like, yeah, I did that a lot of time ago. I know that it's taller than the height of Mount Everest, the chapatis eaten every day. Okay. So important things about questions is, you know, you must try, try to, uh, you know, define the problem correctly. So make sure the question is good. Then you break the question into small parts. And we did that today when we did the walking across US and the Chapati discussion. And then you, you know, test it, right? Test whatever ideas you're using, test them and uh, go small steps at a time. Okay. Then the other thing is, Asking questions, so generate all the time. When we were kids, we had a lot more questions. I think I remember. But somewhere in between, when I went to school and college, the number of questions start to decrease. Because I don't know why, but you can tell me offline. Okay? Now, please read this. Okay? And I, I, I'm just curious to see. Can you, uh, can you fill out this quickly for me? Let's see what comes back. What's difficult about asking good questions and solving them? What do you think? Which do you, do you find it? Do any of these difficult, easy, maybe? If you haven't thought much about it, you can say maybe. So, um, how do you get to that screen? Oh, that's great. So everything is in this session one, right? We were here before. You see all these tabs, every session, all this work is arranged in tabs, right? And this, yeah. this screen is called the tab 1.5. So it's here. If you're on the main page of the course, you can get there. I'll show you one more time. If you're on the course web page, any of these things, on, from the course web page, you can see it like this. See, asking, you see 1.5 right here. So sometimes I'll say go to section 1.5. It's the same way to get there, right? You can either click directly here or come through the way we did. So now we are here. Let's see what people have said. Okay, figuring out which question to ask. Yeah, little difficult, right? That's always tough. When we look at something new, it's difficult. But the idea is the following. I want all of you to practice this, with me at least. Generate, keep generating questions. It's okay, right? Try to try to ask a question, try to ask a question. What has happened for many of us is when we tried before, maybe, maybe we were scared to ask the question, we didn't ask it. We lose that ability. It's like a muscle, it's gone weak, okay? 
if it's not weak it's great those who say that i i know what questions to ask but also remember it's a new question right so if i say come up with 10 interesting questions i would love to see what you come up with in fact there's a place on the project site for you to submit it to me knowing where to start is not a problem maybe some people say a lot of you haven't thought about this right worrying about what others think oh it's good to see that nobody thinks i assume that's how you answered it right none of you care what other people think so that's, that's kind of good in this case coming up with possible solutions yeah so it's kind of split a little bit here i'm afraid of getting into trouble if i say something wrong none of you are afraid or at least the ones who took this thing okay for those who haven't taken it take it let me know okay it's time to wind up i hope you had fun uh, let's submit submit your code and then we will we will look further okay Excuse me. Yeah. Since some of us know each other, is it okay if we work together? Please, I love it if you can work together. Because when you work together, you learn better and faster. Because you might have to explain it to your friends, right? So yes, I encourage you all of you to work together. I don't think of it as just don't copy things, okay? And don't accept things just because my friend said so, right? Or whatever. Don't just say, "Oh, he told me," then I'll just copy it into my. Thing. That doesn't help you. but if you use your friend to say you're telling me that is the answer why is it so and i don't think that is a way to do it i'll do it differently what do you think and you have a good discussion that's beautiful thing to do right and friends are very helpful or family is very helpful for this you know actually for programmers they have a thing it's called i i forget uh, it's called rubber ducking So when you try to solve a problem, if you can't find a person to talk to you, you know they have the rubber ducks that you put in the bath when you go to take a bath, plastic toys. You take the rubber duck and keep it on your table, and you talk to the duck. It's pretty sad, right? If you have friends, it's better to talk to friends. More interesting than ducks. So yeah, so talking about the problem with people is very useful. So please go ahead, okay? Uh, great question, also. Okay, so uh, I look forward to working with all of you next week. Uh, in the meantime go to the project site and start putting in some of your code here practice i covered a couple of python things today okay but notice in one shot we got all kinds of calculation capabilities and next time i am just giving you a preview of next time we will will start doing how some art with python some of you have already done that with me we'll review it and we'll go from there okay so let all of you go enjoy the rest of your uh, day for those I'll of make one more comment we expect yes. that you will be writing code Uh, even if it's difficult we see that you attempted to write a code the objective at the end of this course because this is an interactive course we want to make sure everyone tried writing the code code and you all learned in this course so make sure because we look for we'll review everyone's submission and if we see anyone's submission missing we'll ask what what's the reason you have to come up with some fair reason to, of not writing the code okay yes yes manish that's perfectly said you know the this cannot be done theoretically right you have to write code right and that's the only way we can we can make progress and actually i do i do look through uh, like every couple of days i look through this dashboard and i go and see what people have written and i write comments back even it takes me time right so please definitely definitely do that it is a huge asset for yourself and again i will say this this is not something we are doing to please anyone this is done so that you can become successful better thinkers you learn new skills like python we explore mathematics differently etc it's good for you right even if it's challenging in some places and what is nice here is that we created an environment where we are here to help you if anything is difficult just reach out to us right hopefully nothing should be difficult only thing is needed is for you to take the effort so i will encourage all of you you've done well in this session so continue the effort and uh, look forward to working with all of you over the week and next weekend anything else manish no i no that's it okay okay thank you all of you see you soon thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. bye 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 awesome thank you bye